I've made a lot of videos where I talk about the importance of proof writing because once you know how to write proofs, that kind of opens up the door. You can study other areas of mathematics. But I was thinking, what about areas of math that you can study if your proof writing is not super solid? So let's say that you know some math, you haven't had a proof writing course, but you know some calculus. What is another area of mathematics that you can explore that is really cool? Now, I'm not saying proof writing won't help you in this area of math. It certainly will. And the proofs themselves in this area of mathematics aren't too bad. I think that if you have some basic proof writing skills, it's going to help you and you're going to do well. But this is an area of math that you can study if you know calculus. So if you know calculus, you can actually start learning this area of mathematics and start doing a lot of the problems. And the reason is it's basically a lot of calculus. All of the formulas that you know from calculus, for example, the product rule for derivatives, the quotient rule for derivatives, the chain rule, they still apply. All of the formulas or several of the formulas and theorems for infinite series are the same. A lot of the integration techniques are the same and you learn a lot of really cool and interesting and weird integration techniques. In fact, you even learn how to evaluate regular calculus integrals using new and exotic techniques. So that area of mathematics is called complex analysis. Typically, uh, books that cover this subject at an undergraduate level uh, have the name complex variables in them. So I have two books here that I'm briefly going to show you that are both excellent. So let's take a look at both of these books quickly. So first, this one is called Fundamentals of Complex Analysis. So this one doesn't have complex variables in the title. This is the one I used when I studied complex variables for the first time as an undergraduate. I've taken a, f a few courses on complex variables, both the undergraduate uh, and graduate level. So great book for beginners. I highly recommend it. And we'll take a brief look at this book uh, in a minute. The other one, which is more popular and probably more affordable because you can probably find used copies at a better price, is a more famous book. It's called Complex Variables and Applications, and this is the one by Brown and Churchill. Now, this one has been out for a super, super long time, okay? This book has withstood the test of time, and it's super famous. And I'll leave links in the description to both of these books, but let's go ahead and jump in and just take a quick look at both of these books so you can see the type of mathematics that is in these books, so you can see that if you know calculus, you can actually learn this stuff. Let's briefly start with this one. This is Fundamentals of Complex Analysis. This is the one by Saf and Snyder. This is the one I used when I took complex variables for the first time. And let's just take a brief look at the table of contents here so you can see uh, what it covers. And it's really basic. It starts with the very beginning. It starts with the algebra of complex numbers, point representation of complex numbers, vectors and polar forms, the complex exponential, it's very different from, you know, uh, the regular exponential that you study uh, in, in an algebra class or in a Calc 1 class. It's a little bit more complicated. Powers and roots, planar sets, and we have some other stuff here. And then analytic functions, all of this is very standard stuff. So if you decide to take a course uh, on this in college, you'll be prepared. By the way, the prereq for this in a college level course is usually uh, Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, and a proof writing course is typically required uh, before you study this stuff. The logarithmic function, ooh, washers, wedges, and walls. I remember studying that when I took this class. Then we have complex integration, so contours, Cauchy's theorem. Series representations for analytic functions. This is a really fun section because it really agrees with a lot of the stuff that you have seen in your calculus classes. Residue theory, this is really easy and really fun. It's not hard. Conformal mapping gets a little bit harder here. This is something that sometimes you don't cover when you take a class because it takes a long time to get here. So like it's not something that I covered when I took it um, for the first time, when I took my first course. The transforms of applied mathematics, again, something that you might not see. Laplace transform is covered in other classes like differential equations though. And then numerical construction of conformal maps. And you have answers to the odd numbered problems, which never seems, never seems like enough, right? Never seems like enough. But as you can see here, you have a lot of functions. Uh, here you have to classify the behavior at infinity for each of the following functions. If a zero or a pole, give its order. So that's not too hard. 
So a lot of the mathematics, again, is not, not too bad. Let's just skip around and see what we find in here. Uh, here's the series stuff I was talking about. So you see, here's the ratio test. So suppose that the terms of the series have the property that the ratios approach a limit, L, then the series converges if L is less than one and diverges if L is greater than one. Very similar to what you see in Calc 2. So it's exactly, pretty much exactly the same test. So once you know, once you know some calculus, so apparently I did all of these, I did every single one of these, um, you, can, you can do problems like, like these. Like these are geometric, so you can find the sum. That's pretty cool, right? That's a telescoping series. Yeah, really cool, right? Wow, looks like I did all of these, right? Hardcore. Hardcore. Well, most of them. Use the ratio test. Find the domain of convergence. Yeah, it's pretty much the same process as you would encounter uh, in a calc calculus class, which makes it extra cool. Now, this one is more widely available because it's been out longer, so there's more additions. So you can find used copies. And again, I'll leave links in the description. Then just look for used copies if you want to use copy. I bought this one brand new. Uh, this one's by Brown and Churchill. And I have a few different editions of this one because, again, it's so widely available. And you can see the topics are very similar. Complex numbers, analytic functions. So pretty much uh, exactly the same almost, right? So very, very similar books. Elementary functions, integrals, series again. So same stuff. Ooh, Laurent series. Those are fun. That's something that's a little bit new and different in complex variables. Then we've got residues and poles, applications of residues, mapping by elementary functions, and then conformal mapping, and then applications of conformal mapping, and then two other sections here, which typically um, you don't cover uh, in a course. So it's got a lot of content, and that's how it is in most, ma most math classes. You know, you take a class and you cover some of the content, but you don't you don't do all of it. And look how basic this is. I mean, this starts from the beginning. So here you do have some little baby proofs. Um, so if you have some basic proof writing skills, it really does help. But you know, you could skip the proof stuff and, and go into the computational stuff. But as always, you know, it does help to have some proof writing skills. But these are basic properties of complex numbers. There's some more here. Use mathematical induction to show that we have some identities here that need to be proved uh, using induction. Not too bad. If you know induction and you know how to write proofs, you could certainly do those. And then here's the uh, triangle inequality for complex numbers. I actually have a proof of this uh, here on the channel. I have one for complex numbers and uh, one for real numbers. And then this is where it gets really interesting. Uh, here you start talking about uh, exponential form of complex numbers and uh, talks about the argument and all of that stuff. So good knowledge, good stuff to know. And it really opens the door because um, it's like you, you, you see a side of mathematics that you hadn't seen before. You know, all of a sudden, instead of functions of a real variable, you're looking at functions of a complex variable. And I think that makes it uh, extra interesting and extra cool. And all of those things that you learn in calculus can be directly applied to this class, which, which is why I wanted to make this video. You know, it's, it's kind of cool to see a subject that just basically, you know, directly uh, branches off of calculus. Like once you know some calculus, you can jump into this stuff. Both great books on complex variables. Again, the one by Saf and Snyder is my favorite. Uh, the price, however, is probably a little bit higher and even used copies might be more expensive because there's just less of them available. Whereas this one uh, is more popular and it's been around longer. It's the one by Brown and Churchill. I'll leave links in the description to both of these. And there's other good books too. I just wanted to pick two textbooks uh, that you can use to learn complex variables. As always, if you have any comments or anything interesting to share, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you want to learn mathematics, I do have courses. Check out my website, mathsourcer.com. I have courses on calculus, differential equations, algebra, etc. They're actually on the Udemy platform, and Udemy is always having sales. But if you use uh, the links through my website, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you get the lowest price or a very low price because I lowered the price to the bare minimum. Also, if you are a subscriber, that's awesome. If you're not and you feel like you found some value in this content, consider subscribing if you want to. If not, that's cool too. Hopefully. Uh, you know something new and you can maybe explore complex variables. Until next time, good luck. Go do some mathematics.